Recording is on. So Jesse and I are talking through some media browser capabilities in Plenty, and um, we've gone through some different ideas, and I, I've I've gone through and tried to implement a couple different things. So I wanted to get Jesse's thoughts on some of this stuff and take a look at it kind of for the first time. I think maybe he he's dabbled a little bit in, in the code, but I want to walk through it and just maybe take a look at it. So I'm going to share my screen. And let me flip over to, okay. Um, so this is, this is a, a test site here. I'm logged in. Um, and basically now we have this new media um, button that will open up uh, a library or an upload um, section here. And what this is oh. essentially do, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And what this is essentially doing here is um, right now, this is actually pulling, um, it, it's fetching this URL. So um, in a, a Plenty site, there's an assets folder. That's, that's where we hold all our stuff. And basically that has uh, uh, all the files that would be in the site. And now what we're doing is pretty simple here. We're actually going and um, in our media browser component, we call out to this get assets file here um, that actually just does a fetch on that URL. So it comes through here, it it breaks the cache, um, it gets a text response because this is HTML and it parses it. Uh, and then it tries to get all the links and it follows each one of those links. Well, you know, it gathers those links, but then we follow each one of those links essentially. Um, and we get the file that actually exists at the end there and we gather that into an all files um, array. So. I mean, one potential challenge I see with doing this is some servers might block these kind of things. I don't know. Is that something that you would? Yeah, I think most of the servers does that. Yeah, most of the servers does it. Okay, so so that might be a challenge. Um, you know, for for plenty of sites like this stuff is all public, so I don't know if there, I don't think there's any risk to leaving this here. But it, it, do you think it's is it just generally a not a best practice? You think to to kind of leave these files? Um, I think, yeah. Is that an index file, index.html index file that you're fetching or is this server generated page? Well, so this, yeah, this is server general. So this is just like, um, with, I, I don't know. I imagine it is an index.html file, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, essentially that's what, that's what, what it is there. Um, yeah. uh, but, but it's not like, um, I don't think our assets are, let's see here. Because with static sites, there's no actually like index of files. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Usually, it in the server doesn't generate the index page. Yeah, so I think it's like inferring it, right? So it's like this empty assets file here, and since there's no, there's no like actual landing page HTML file, it, it gives you the index, and it just browses these whatever you have in here as contents, right? Yeah, whatever server you are using within the plant within plenty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And every server does it differently. So, but mm. usually there's links, so that's pretty safe. Safe way you are doing it. Oh, you think it's safe? It's safe if there's a server indexing the files. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, exactly. And and so I guess I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm I'm worried that you know. You, if you deployed a Netlify or something like that, they're yeah. they're probably coming through here, and they're they might be blocking this kind of access. You know, because all you it just gives you a four hundred four page if you try to exactly exactly mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I was worried about because you know you could have like an HD access rule that would just like block this right, yeah. um, and if you do that, then I assume this whole display here would break. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I I guess you know I liked. I like the idea of just like, you know, not having to do too much more processing or in our build time and just like being able to pull this. But if it's going to be fragile, um, then we'll have to think, you know, through some of the stuff that you were showing us before with the index file kind of generating that to, to keep track of some of this stuff. So that might be a more robust way to do it. But for now, I want to just kind of like, okay, with the existing structure there, can I pull this out and, and build it into a browser? And that's kind of the approach I took, right? So, so fetch those, um, you know, follow all those paths. So each one of these has its own path to like a file. So like, for instance, cats goes to another thing and then these are links as well so you click on these and then they eventually get to the the ultimate file right um so it goes through there gathers those pulls them in here um and then uh what it also does is it goes through and it builds out filters um so let's see uh see if i can explain this so so essentially um as it's going through and it's gathering the links it's also saying okay do we have any subfolders and then if we do, let's let's add those to a filters array. Um, so each one of these subfolders 
gets added here. Um, let me see if I can demonstrate this. Let me go to my so own. categories or keywords that are the folder names. Um, so, so yeah, exactly. So exactly. So so we have the cats, dogs, and tests here. Yep. So those become the, the keywords here. Um, and then nested folders get pulled out to the first level as well because since they're they're more like filters here. So in, for example, yep. in tests there is nested. And you pull them out. And what happens is if you click on those, it'll show just the nested. Um, so that shows just this. Um, and then if you were to click on test as well, it's additive. So it would show, you know, this level and the nested level in here. Um, and then you could add, you know, cats. Uh, if you add an empty folder, it won't it won't clear it. But if you have all your filters cleared and you were to click on a, an empty folder originally, it'll show um, mm, yeah. no response. So it's, it's just a, a way to... Yeah. Yeah. Work logically. Yeah. Yeah, just a way to kind of like narrow results. I think we'll probably add a search field his, here as well at some point. Um, and then maybe uh, even a way to limit based on file type. So like PDFs versus PNGs versus other types of files. Um, I think right now I've only been thinking about like, you know, images and documents. Like, you know, I started playing around with some like, you know, Microsoft Word documents. Um, but at some point we might want to think about audio files, even video and that type of thing. So I think the filtering can get better. I'm not sure exactly what the UI will look like for that. So I'm not getting too overly concerned with um, updating that now, but I wanted this to, to generally work like this. Yeah. Um, here's a here's a, an opportunity for a next step. So I have some notes here about some things where things are missing. Um, but one of the things here is um, if you select these, uh, you get a little visual. It's oh. not very good right now. I think uh, I need to update this to be a little more apparent, but you get a little blue bolt border around yeah. the ears. And you should get options here to, you know, um, download all these files. So you might want to download these locally um, so you can edit them or do something else with them. But also you should have an option to uh, delete these uh, permanently from the, the server and that will do a delete action over to GitLab and, and remove yep. it from the site. Um, and then I think, you know, potentially we, we might want to be able to copy paths as well or move them, but um, I'm not overly concerned with that in the short term. So that's that. I, I went over this with a, I got on with Stephanie um, to to take a look at this last time. So we did a recording on this, so I don't want to beat it too much to death. I want to take a look at um, this other section here. So we have now this file uploading capability. Um, so on the one hand, you can come over here and you can drag and drop files. So I could like grab, these are just screenshots I've taken. So I could grab a couple files like this. And as I hover over, you can see that it um, highlights visually and then I could just drop these here. And then you get, these uh, previews of what's going on, but it's not been uploaded to the server yet. So this is just kind of a preview. And I'm not sure if this is a clear way to do it. So this might take some user testing, but essentially, so you get this preview, then you could hit publish and it will save both these files, or you could, you know, you could select, so you could discard all of them. If you discard all, they go away, right? Um, mm -hmm. And let's come back here. Let's, let's just drag them back over. Um, you could also select individual ones. Um, and let me, yeah, let me select like this. So then that changes this from discard all to discard selected. So I could just discard one of these and then we could publish, you know, for instance, you might upload a whole folder of files and then you want to, um, you looked at like one of them is like a personal file and this is a, a professional site. So you might want to go through, click that, discard that and then publish the rest. Um, and essentially when you publish, so let's take a look over here. So we're um, in the test site that this is connected to on GitLab. Um, we see the last thing I did was delete a test PDF. Let's come back here and let's, publish this file. So it's sending, changes committed, flips back over to a new, the upload screen. And then if I reload this over here, we should see that, okay, it's creating assets, many folders that PNG, that's the file name um, from that individual file. And there's the picture getting uploaded there. Um, this, will this will work with multiple files. So <clears throat> for instance, if I come here and I browse and let's grab, um, so not many folders because we just uploaded that. Let's grab this one. Uh, let's grab folders two and test. So I'm going to open these and then let's publish all of these. So changes committed. And then if I come back over here and I take a look at the site, we should see now um, it create three files. So essentially what I did is if it creates multiple, so if it creates a single, it'll tell the file name in the actual commit message. Um, if it's a single file, I figure, uh, sorry, a multiple file, um, I didn't want to make the commit message super long, so I just said, okay, just give the number of files we have there. Um, and you can see here that we've created these three files here mm. in a test PDF. Um, so, so yeah, so this is um, kind of where we're at. And it's actually funny, I'm seeing here, that this looks like this uh, came over empty. That's, that's interesting. So if I did... It's wrong um, to do, like, 
um, what is it, 100,000 bytes oh. from empty. Oh, it's, it's different oh, it's, from uh, empty, yeah. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So it's just not displaying. Let's, yeah, let's see here. Because um, I did some upload with PDFs before and it seemed to work. Okay, let's see. Okay, this works. Yep. Um, this is just a PDF I downloaded. Um, okay, so so yeah, so essentially we're we're at a place where you know it's generally working. Um, I think there are things that could be better. So and and in things that where we're still incomplete. So I think um, you know if we try to do a name con uh, a collision. So essentially, if we try to upload the same file again, um, we don't really get a useful warning in the UI. We get a console error. Let me just just for completeness let's let's show what that looks like um actually first let me come in here let's inspect and let's just look at our console so um we have some logging messages in here too that's that's fine um so we already uploaded many folders right let's grab this let's publish it again so it said could not commit the changes it said in the ui so that's not a a, a great warning it should probably stay there and, and, and highlight the file that is giving the problems right so that people can know to either discard it or change the name um and then we essentially get this error here that um a file with this name already exists because we're trying to pass a create action versus an update action. Um, yep. So um, it, it over here, change like better user request. Like if if user wants to replace the file, it could be it could set it as an update action. Yeah, yeah, and maybe and that might be the the UI, right? So essentially, yeah. it could, it could flag a name collision and say, "Hey, there's a file that already has his name. Do you want to replace it?" And then that could change that action. Um, yeah. it, it does get tricky with the we're doing multiple, you know, handling multiple files. So essentially, what we're doing here is we're building an action list. So the GitLab API allows you to uh, just basically create an array of actions. Mm -hmm. um, so this could be many files. So we're pushing multiple files here, and then the action. I've kind of abstracted some of this so you can you can specify the action because we're using this published.js file for both updating content and um, you know creating files and things like that. And this action goes from update to create. Um, so essentially what we're saying is over here when we're actually, um, let's see, in the file upload, when we're calling this save, we're going to pass the action. So we're going to pass create on this. But if we're looking at something like the visual editor, we're going to pass a different action, right? We're going to pass, um, oops, let's see update right and then also encoding so the encoding is different so um yeah. these text updates are just json right so you're going to pass them as text updates but if you're over here on um the file upload again uh, you're going to pass that as base 64. so we want to encode this um just for people who aren't aware so base 64 is basically an encoding that um takes your images and puts them into like a long string so it makes it easier and more um consistent for sending things you know over the wire to, to a different place so we yeah, basically 64. 65 64 characters for the encoding so it it's like no set of characters instead of like random binary data yeah exactly exactly That's visual characters yep yep and so and yeah i'm doing some things that um so essentially uh you know i might be doing these things in not the most efficient way so when i I, I um let's see here, um, with with the file and drag uh, drag and drop um, interface, I was getting data out of uh, out of the files using this kind of uh, data transfer um, interface here, um, mm -hmm. and then I was getting these as files, which are, are uh, base sixty four encoded um, files, um, and you can actually render. So that's how we're we're doing a lot of things like the mm -hmm. displays here. If we come here and we just like add like display. So this is actually like a base 64 um, file representation and you can pass as a, as a source and it will display it. Um, so it's kind of interesting. But then what we're doing is before we pass it over the wire to uh, GitLab, we need to, GitLab wants to encode it in its request. So I, I like, I remove the, the, the previous encoding so I can actually re-encode it. Um, and I'm not sure if that even makes sense with how I'm doing it. Um, there's probably better ways, but essentially over here in publish, what I said here is like, okay, um, if we have to encode this, so if we're passing base 64 encoding, um, because it wants to pass it in this, this push action, um, mm -hmm. let's, let's lop off the, the previous base 64 stuff. So uh, essentially you can come here and we can just get the, everything after the comma. So there'll be like, it'll be like data colon, you know, PNG base 64. Yeah. yeah, exactly. All the metadata. So we, we lop that off. So essentially it does a comma and then it, then it has your actual encoded string. So we just get the encoded string here, and then we, we 
we get that from the thing. So we lop all that off. So we get the encoding string and then it re-encodes it here in this action when, when you actually pass it to um, GitLab. So that's what's happening there. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's not the best way. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, that's essentially what's happening there. Um, yeah. So, so that's all generally working. So I think, you know, in terms of things that, you know, need to be better, um, you know, fixing the name collision stuff. I think what you mentioned there is, is probably the right call. Like, you know, highlight it and then give the option to override it potentially. That'd be cool. Um, uh, allowing specific subfolders would be nice. So right now we, I'm kind of hard coding this into the assets folder. Um, I don't know if I'm doing that in the save action. I can't remember. I'm probably doing that. Um, I might be doing that in the file upload. I don't know exactly where I'm doing that now because I can't remember, but I'm essentially just hard coding it into, um, into the assets folder. Um, oh, I think I'm doing it up here. Yeah, so I'm, I'm basically giving the file name. I'm like, this is your file name. But you know, the file name could be um, other than this, right? And um, I, maybe you have something like this where you can add filters, but like, I don't know. We have to think of a UI way to do it, but also a technical way to allow people to upload these things to specific folders. Um, yeah, so that, that's nice to have. Kind of three, that's, you, you would be able to select a, yeah. Not on the tree. Yep. Yep. Probably, probably the tree might work. That might be the easiest visual way to, to think about that. Um, let's see. That's so that's a consideration. Another thing think about, so removing the file from the gallery. So there really should be, again, this is like coming to come over here, selecting these and you should be, have a pop-up that looks similar to like the buttons over here that would allow you to remove it from Git, And that would do a, a delete action, um, over to the, the GitLab API that, you know, the docs over here. Um, so we would delete that. Uh, another thing thinking about, so the editing experience, so there still needs to be a way. Um, mm. and we talked about this before, I believe, and I, I showed Stephanie on the last video if folks are interested. Um, but, uh, essentially if we come over here and we, um, we're, we're going to do some regex. So if you have something like assets, my file dot JPEG, um, what we're going to do is do some regex and be like, okay, this is an assets folder that ends in a file. So this is, this should be um, a rendering of a file. Essentially what we're going to do is, um, I think last time I, I mentioned that we're going to do a file upload widget, but really what we want to do here is we want to, this should point to an existing file. Mm. And so we should render like a tiny little thumbnail of what, say it points to this file here. It should render a tiny thumbnail of it here. And then you should have the option to replace it. Um, so there should be like a button to replace. And then, um, I don't think we want an option to remove because the, the base, uh, way that the CMS works being kind of like this discoverable or contextual CMS that however we're calling it. Um, if we remove this, like if we were to take, uh, you know, something that looked like this and then remove it, then you would lose your widget, right? So we, we want to make sure that yeah. um, we're, we're replacing, not removing. Um, and then if you need to remove, you should put it into a component like this where you could actually come through here and you could like, you know, remove it, right? So that's, yeah. I think that's a, an, uh, a site constructor thing that you should do. But essentially what we want to do is, so if we find something like this, um, then we want to, display the thumbnail and we also want to have a button to replace. And then what we want, I think to happen is this whole interface here, I think I'm going to restructure as a pop-up to make sure, cause right now I like, if I were to click on something like this to replace and, and you know, maybe the media wasn't open, but then all of a sudden the slides open, I, I might know that these things are related, but it's kind of a weird um, interface. What I think I want to do is if I want to press replace, I want a pop-up to take over the whole screen and darken the rest of the screen. And so then I know I'm interacting with that, that file field directly. Um, and essentially what would happen is I would have an option to upload a single file to replace. Um, and I think we'd want to limit it because essentially you can't put multiple files into one file field. It's only single. Um, so we would limit this to a single file field, um, but you could drag or drop still, or you could come to your gallery and you could select a single file. Like say I select this first one here. Um, and if I did that, it would just pop, it would, the pop-up would disappear and it would populate this string with the correct path to this, to the to new file. And you see the thumbnail of the new file there. Right. So it's a, that, that's kind of how I'm thinking that interface would work. Um, yeah, so just, it would be yeah. kind of like a dialogue, dialogue that asks what file you do you want to put in the field. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it would yep. Be blocking. It would be blocking for the page. Exactly. Yep. It, it blocks your page. So once you click the the replace or whatever, it, it blocks your page. So you have to make a decision on it, um, and then uh, and then it comes back. And you could X out of it too. You know, in case you, you didn't want to make the decision, like you you clicked it out of curiosity, um, and you didn't want to change the file. You could do that as well. Um, I think. And then also just kind of mention, like at the end of the day, like everything is still going to be this text behind the scenes. So over here, 
um, like this is this is all that's going to be exchanging, right? But visually, you'll see this as you know something that looks like a thumbnail, and you'll have a widget to to interact with it. So the person in the CMS sees something different, but really at the end of the day, this is all that's being exchanged, right? Either if you come through the gallery and like this would pop up, and you select this first file, essentially what it would do is it would just copy the path from this existing media over to the, the field over here. Um, yep. So that's kind of what I'm thinking there. Um, I know I'm throwing a lot at you, but I want to just kind of go through maybe a couple other ideas here. Um, so I, I think, uh, so we talked about editing experience, so regex to identify the media. I think also we want to, it'd be great if we could limit this to the folder that um, is existing. So for instance, let's, if, you, if uh, this file here was in um, cats.my file here, um, it would be nice that if the pop-up came up and you went to the gallery, it would already be limited like this. Uh, yeah. And you, you should be able to come out of it, but it should already be limited here. So you could choose, you know, of the existing cat folder, because we these are probably all going to be related since you're going in that file, that folder here, right? So you'd be like, oh, um, I want to change this cat. So maybe it was this cat was selected first and you want to change it to this cat. So you could, you would basically click change. There'd be a button to change over here. You get the pop-up, you select the new cat, and then that would exchange it over here, right? Yeah. Um, so I think it'd be cool if the, fo the folder was automatically applied there. Um, and I think this kind of ties into another thing that I'm, I'm thinking about doing. Um, essentially, I, I've been thinking about image styles, right? So um, a big challenge for people when they're doing things on websites, um, there might be uh, a section on a website that wants a, a photo that's 500 pixels by 300 pixels tall. Um, and if someone's uploading their own files and not being careful about cropping and scaling those, then you're going to get really weird layouts. So, um, you know, uh, I'm thinking about, well, how do we auto crop and scale things? And that's th this concept of image styles. And I went back and forth on a bunch of different ways to do it. And they were all kind of complicated. And I think the simplest way is what you're, what I actually want to do is um, inside plenty.json, mm -hmm. you'd essentially come in here. And this, again, for people watching, this is not going to be the, probably the, the ultimate um, API, but uh, you, you define something like image style or image styles. Um, and then, in here, you would have an array, uh, sorry, an object that would so be like the sizes of images. Exactly. So you do something like this. You'd say, so this is all within the assets folder, but you'd say, okay, the cats folder is, and then I don't know if we want to do just something like a simple string, like you do 500 by, or, you know, 500, whatever it is by 300, or if we want to make it, you know, a little more official and do something like, you know, uh, yeah with height, you know, that kind of thing, but right. essentially two elements or something. Yeah. Yeah. But essentially that's what we do. So, so essentially you're going to define image styles and then on every build it's going to go through. So initially I thought like, okay, you could have, you could specify the source folder and then the destination folder. And that was challenging for a lot of reasons because like, first of all, like when you come over to this editing experience, keeping it simple, like, you know, this would be pointed at the destination cause that's what's rendering. Right. But then you'd have to know which source that came from. Um, and then you have to worry about like, you know, uploading file one place, copying it and building over. So I think what I'm actually landing on for simplicity is if you define an image style here, so, you know, whatever, this, this is not obviously not the ultimate API, but if you just, if you define this image style like this, right. Um, anytime that someone uploads the file to cats, the cats folder, again, that's, you know, this folder here. Um, so if you, uh, whoops, if you upload anything to here, on a build, it's going to crop and scale it to uh, whatever specifications. So you can say scale. There's Go libraries that that help with this, right? So on build, we can we can do that. We can crop and scale. Say okay, we're, we want to scale it. I mean, so hard to do like with JavaScript with Canvas API. So JavaScript has a, a good API for it. You're saying? Yeah, Canvas API. Okay. What is it called? Oh, off screen is Canvas. And oh, off screen. Okay, interesting. And but is that server side stuff or is it something it's, it's front front end side really so we could you do it the front end oh, and actually would would have to do because it's completely front end cms well yeah so so the way i was thinking is so this okay so i'm interested in that so i did so my thought was that this wouldn't be possible to do front end because you because eventually you, you have to change the file that sits in the server, right? Like you have to actually change the size of that because like if you, um, if you're just like scaling the image, like you're still loading the big image, right? And we want to load the smaller image, right? Yeah, it it can be done before uploading the image. Before uploading. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. 
Okay, that might be a better experience. Mostly on the user's machine that that's editing the page. Yep. Okay, that's cool. I didn't know about that. Um, that's that's really cool because yeah, I was this was uh, I was talking about this with Stephanie actually offline. So like the challenge here is you know you want your front end tools to like because you might want to be able to set like a focal point or something too, right? You might want to do more than just that. And so your front end tools I thought were decoupled from your back end, which I thought I just assumed that this would have to happen on the back end because that's where this actual file would be living. Um, but if that might be a better solution than to do it on the front end before it even gets uploaded, um, that's a cool idea. Uh, and then you're not doing extra processing um, when you're doing your builds. Um, yeah. But because because the way I was picturing, okay, this is just, let me hear this out. But I, I like the way that you're talking about. It. I actually think it's a better approach. But what I was thinking is like, okay, if we did this, essentially what would happen is, you know, through your widget, you'd come here, you would potentially upload a bigger image, right? That would save the bigger image back to, you know, uh, to GitLab or local or whatever it is. And then on the build, what it does is it actually goes in it, it changes that image and it resaves it. But yeah, I like the, if you can do it on the front end before uploading, I think that's a better experience. So um, no, this is super helpful. Um, cool. Hmm. No, good to hash out these ideas and, and think through them different ways. Um, I think it, it could actually like save it on multiple formats, like WebP and yeah. JPEG 2000, if you want it. Yep, exactly. Yeah, so for for faster loading images, yeah, that's a great um, it's a great Actually, point. It would be quite good, like quite good for for current browser, current uh, current times browser, like current browser versions. Yep, it's much much like much faster to load. Yeah. Yeah, and I try, I mean, I gen maybe this is not the right approach, but I generally try to build for the modern stuff. Like, I don't care about, like, it's like IE, like, that's not, that's gone. Like, I don't care about building for that stuff um, that much. And maybe that's not the right attitude, but I, I'd rather build for the future. Although um, there's also the services to optimize images in the server, like like CDNs, image CDNs. Oh, yeah, yep. That's also a possibility. Yeah. So like uploading them to like a, a completely different place. Is that what we're it, yeah, I don't know if Net Netlify already has the feature to optimize your images on the go, like mm -hmm. on request and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah. it basically basically coming from this same same place from the Git Git repository. Yeah, yeah. So it's actually useful for the WebP conversation. Yeah. Because it detects if this browser is super. Front end before uploading. Yeah, I think that's that's a good way to do it. I, I really like that. And, and maybe you know, potentially allowing people to have options. So it's hard. You don't want to give people like too many things to do, right? Because then it gets like, I just want to upload an image. And a lot of my clients don't always understand, you know, the differences between these things and then, nor, nor should they. Um, so like, yeah. images in, in multiple uh, image styles and things like that. But this is cool. I didn't I didn't realize that you could do that client side before uploading. Makes a lot of sense. I feel like that's a better workflow. So I think I'm really interested to kind of explore that a little bit more. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to show you, like code wise or anything like that. I think this this is pretty good, Jesse. We can probably yeah. I don't know. Did you have any other questions about anything I'm working on or or concerns about the approach or some changes? I have some like potential problems I've listed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For example, the categories. I, I think, does it work for multiple same name, same similarly named, nested folders? Have you tried that? Oh no. That no. Yeah. That's that's. <laughs> so you you would probably yeah you'd probably get multiple filters with the same yeah. name. It would be yeah. It it would it, be it very be useful. Collapsing to one. Yeah. One filter. Yep. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's interesting. Um. Yeah, might it might I'm not even sure it might collapse into one or it might give you multiple of the same name. I'm not yeah. sure. And then you just have to know that one's one or the other. So yeah, that that would definitely be a challenge. Um 
and I could see like it's, things it's like image you, you, usability challenge also. Yeah. Yep. But how do you indicate that it belongs to some parent category? Yep. Yep. For sure. That is definitely a, a short site. And then I thought of the, when you were base, base 64 encoding the images for the preview, you yeah. could do it with object URLs. So it wouldn't have to like encode it and then load it again. It's more efficient to just mm. make it make an URL, like virtual URL out of it in JavaScript. Oh, and then okay. reference it in the okay. That's that, just optimization stuff. That sounds good. I think, yeah, I'm all ears for those optimizations. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think right now it's like, it, it's a little bit sloppy how things are kind of being put together. So I think like, yeah, optimizing, fixing things, it, I, I'm all about it, so. Yeah, but nothing else actually. Putting. Yep, yeah. I think that'd be really cool. That would be cool, yeah. Yeah. But it's more advanced. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe later. Mm -hmm. Maybe get everything else important out of the way. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, once it gets like working at a base level, you know, the the full kind of like life cycle things working, then those things would be awesome to do. Mm. Um yeah, so I guess like um in terms of next steps, I I could start working on getting the 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 visual um rendering of, of those like regexing those things to make some kind of widget there um yeah i i don't know we can talk about this off camera too like assigning things but like yeah. if, if you want to start thinking through like optimizations of stuff like go nuts but um yeah um yeah i, I we can talk about this offline I'll, I'll kill the recording for now i think this is a good um stopping point for this unless there's anything else you want to discuss yeah no not at the moment okay awesome